Hello, so this is a uh, run through of the BZP Pro Smart Scanner Bipad, another example. This is on a female uh, nude, the download it from the internet. You can see I have it in a layer here, a reference uh, layer, some reference mode, I'll put it on template. I actually made uh, buttons on a menu up here on the shelf that actually um, launched the plugin, so launched the software rather. So I'm going to just hit these buttons, hit this button. The Smart Scanner Biped is launched. I'll start by hitting the scale node, executing the sketch skeleton. You can see it's relatively in a pretty good position right there, for spine at least. So I'm just going to go through and just kind of match this on up. It doesn't have, that, doesn't have to be perfect, but perfect enough. And one of the great things about this software that BZ, BZ, BZP Pro has written is that if you do uh, mess up the, the rig, you can go ahead and do it as many times as you want relatively quickly. When I got this mesh off of TurboSquid, uh, the person that made this, looks like he or she actually um, put markers in the mesh where the joints should where they would where they would want the joints to be but just because they did it that way doesn't mean that that's how we're gonna actually do it so this is a pretty voluptuous uh, young lady that looks that could be a good model to rig from a animation or visual effects standpoint. And the model was called uh, African American Nude. I, I, believe that's, I believe that's what it was called. So, I'll just kind of come through and grab these, move these around so then the proper, proper spot. And I'm going to simplify this just so it um, has the basic necessities on it. I won't worry about flexing or anything. I'll just get the basic, basic stuff on there. The flexing joints actually you would add after the um, initial skin pass because uh, we at BZP Pro don't want to um, handle your the amount of flexing that your uh, joints actually have. Kind of lining this up. Let's see how it looks from the front. And I'll probably get up a little bit, move it on down, like so, let up a little bit more. And yeah, in all honesty, she got the the markers in a pretty good in a pretty good spot. And this level of uh, technical direction you would see at uh, most likely a company like uh, Lucasfilm or where I used to work on the steering committee of uh, EA Sports. I was actually in global meetings with both uh, Tiburon, EA Orlando, which is EA Orlando, and um, EAC, which is the uh, FIFA studio FIFA and NHL things like that so one thing that you know based on my experience is this this is really gonna knock a human out of the park um, it'll also knock a cartoony car character out of the park and of course we have the quadruped version as well now just kinda go and go in top mode 
and just I'm gonna actually um, shrink this down a little bit maybe a little bit more just decrease the joint size just so I can see it a little bit better and just kind of match these into the proper spot Females and males, although, although they move a lot differently, uh, the actual methodology behind rigging them is the exact same. So that that remains constant. And there might be some cleanup here and there, but for the most part, Ideally, you want your fingers in a, a little bit of a bend pose because there you want to have your mesh modeled in the most neutral state. But this shouldn't be a big deal. But you can see how I'm kind of sketching this thing out. see what it looks like from the from the front okay it's way down here yeah. and for sake of argument I'm not gonna make it perfect perfect although I'll make it pretty pretty good This is a. The hands are typically the most uh, difficult thing to to do. They just take they just take the longest time. Very tedious. And these markers that she put in are actually pretty uh, pretty good. But you'll see the the hands take a take a long time. Okay, so once that's done for the most part, go back to your GUI and then once you're satisfied with what one side looks like, you can leave it asymmetrical if you want. Just make it symmetrical. And then Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of slide this out a little bit more, rotate this in, there, now make it symmetrical, now finalize, drop down, drop down B, hit button 5, makes the leaf joints, I'm going to kind of move these into place. I'm actually going to end up deleting these anyway, but mirror them, they're mirrored over. Finalize. Drop down, drop down C. Any excess joints I don't want. I don't want hamstrings or biceps or pecs or lats. I could simplify down the mobile if I want to, but I won't do that. Select the mesh. How many influences for? Does it bind? And then select either film next gen or mobile. I'll select film next gen for referencing the smart scanner scene. Hit AA. Go to where the scene is located. And then you can kind of see how it's how it's blocked in. And then with a quick run through, I can kind of take this and scale this down universally and it scales it down a little bit 
and just kind of come through and just begin to move this around just so you have a tight a tight scene I was actually on the steering committee of Lucasfilm uh, LucasArts, LucasArts Animation, Industrial Light and Magic as I've spoken about in several other uh, tutorial videos and one of the things I was doing was actually uh, skinning and uh, rigging on the Force Unleashed and had I had a tool like this doing this, it would probably be a little bit cleaned up in the, in the groin area this would have saved me hours upon hours of time so Just take this and kind of slide this on forward. Slide this on forward. this and scale this on up, slide this on forward a little bit. You can see she's got a bit of a, she's has curves on her. I'll kind of encompass the curves. I want to come in through here and just want to kind of tighten this up a little bit. up this way turn this up this way there might be a little bit of under armor on under underarm uh, clean up needs to be done just to get it nice and tight. Head. Put that cage around there. Just to kind of get it, get it nice and tight. And there'd probably be some clean up with the fingers, but not too much. They're they're pretty tight in there. So when you have a base done, come through and actually copy the skin weights, transfer. Then you can just kind of come through and actually test it out a little bit. So you can see when I come through and actually do this. It's actually all it's fairly clean. It's 
a clean mesh. Might be a little bit of clean up here and there, but for the most part, it's a clean mesh. And you can see it's all moving around, all looks great. All's in there. And then hit 8C and references the scene. So now I have a clean scene with clean weighting on it. Drop down, drop down D, hit button 9. Generates the entire control rig. Control rig's done. Hit button below it makes it cartoony. Button below that makes the facial GUI. And you have a completed rig. Control the twist. Squash and stretch. And you can do a little bit of cleanup, but this is for pre-muscle sim. It's completed. I've done. I've basically saved 110 hours of rigging work into approximately 10 minutes. Pre-muscle sim, ready to do serious production work. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can see everything is working. It looks great. Everything's moving around. And this is conclusion so we have a working working mesh and any cleanup that you want to do you can go ahead and do it this at this time you need any tweaking that you want to do, you can do it this time as well thank you for your time